Hi everyone and welcome to hashtag let's get awkward. I'm your host Billy No Mates and today we are looking at transgenders in drag. Transgenders have been around since the dawn of time but the word we use is relatively new. This is what people usually mean when they say trans is a new well. I think that's what they're trying to say, but never find the right words and sound like a dick as they make it sound like LGBT, LGBT plus just sprung out of the ground. You know, when they go, oh, transgenders, this is all a new thing. No, it's been around forever, but we're just using new words for it. So, but back to transgenders in drag. As we've seen in seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race, there are trans queens such as Peppermint, Geogun, despite her ugh, on her all-star season, Carmen Career, Kelly Mantle, Jiggly Caliente, Kenya Michaels, Sonique, Stacey Lane Matthews. So <clears throat> looking at it, we've had 12 seasons of Drag Race, four seasons of Drag Race All-Stars, and one season of Celebrity Drag Race Though we're going to be looking at the other two. So out of 16 race seasons of Drag Race, we've had about 8, 9 trans queens. And people all over, including previous drag competitors, have asked RuPaul to include more transgender queens to compete as they feel they are not allowing them <clears throat> to compete would ignore their contribution to the great art of drag. Growing up, I'd always seen drags in bits and bobs in shows and movies I watched as a kid, including RuPaul, who made an appearance in Sabrina the Teenage Witch, where he played a judge who disguised himself as a hairdresser. It's actually a really, really funny clip when um, <clears throat> Sabrina's got the pink all buffed up hair and she, he, she's like, oh, I'm going to need you sign a consent form, some creams and just turn the music really loud so you can't hear her screaming. You need to look it up, it's funny. Then one day, BAM! On Netflix appeared the first four seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. And I was gagging! The hair, the makeup, the gowns were glorious. I mean, especially on season six with Bianca Del Rio, who I have seen live a few years back. I got to do the meet and greet, which was amazing. She even joked I could play with the balls after the show and I was in stitches. And what made it even better was at the end of the show, she reads out questions from the audience and she read out my question, which said, how do giraffes throw up? Yeah, I really asked that to a drag race winner and she tore me apart with jokes and laughs and loved every, I loved every moment. I mean, people, everyone was laughing and like applauding me and she's like, no, 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 ignore the... F the fat dyke let the people in the white coats take her away and i was just laughing my head off <laughs> that i got picked out though i think my writing was a bit is because she couldn't say her last name properly but drag is amazing it takes you to wonderful places it makes you laugh it makes you cry it can reach places you never thought you had inside you which led me to well put me on my journey on finding my gender identity. Well, if we go away from the Dr RuPaul's Drag Race, which is now mainstream, though RuPaul said it'll never be mainstream, it's mainstream, it's on Netflix. There are many trans non-binary queens and kings outside of the world of RuPaul, <clears throat> such as Lily Snatch Dragon and Chio, I'm not sure if I've pronounced that properly, Georgie B, Yoko Fomo, Miss Kevin Legrand, Zane Fallick, and many more. If you just look it up, you just type it in Google and you get a whole list right in front of you. But if you look at um, look at the transgender drag community, Sasha Fuller, who was winner of season nine, commented that her drag was born in a community full of trans women, trans men, and gender non-conforming folks doing drag. That's the real world of drag, like it or not. I think it's fabulous. I will fight my entire life to protect it and uplift it. 
then we also have a comment from Ben de la Creme from season six and all star season three which had to be the worst season because she nominated herself or she literally kicked herself off the season and then Sandra was in for the running to win and Sandra was so robbed she did amazing she ticked all the boxes in the last challenge and she didn't get put to the final that was just no RuPaul really lost the ball on that season but back to Ben de la Creme she says my partner of almost three years is trans and hashtag Ben de la Christ help anyone who tries to tell him what he can can and can't do just saying so it does it seems it kind of seems like a simple answer of yes transgender has had an impact I mean look at this way it's a sad example you're a trans woman man in society where it is not accepted and not tolerated and stepping into shoes you want will put your life in danger so what do you do <clears throat> drag of course for so many nights a week you get to dress to the nines in the gender identity you are but then people actually want to know well people actually care about who about it what is the difference between drag and trans Transgender is your gender identity. It's who you are. Drag is an art. It's a performance. It's an expression. There have been more conversations about having transgenders in drag since 2018, where RuPaul made comments about allowing transgenders on the show who had had surgeries to change their bodies and compared it to using drug enhancements while being in the Olympics. <coughs> Trinity, <coughs> the talk. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, Trinity, the talk. Sorry, <laughs> that was a really bad hint. But I must highlight, I have nothing against Trinity, the talk. I'm just saying he's a cisgender gay man who has had work done to look more feminine. I mean, he's had butt implants, he's had his lips done, he's had implants in his face. And RuPaul didn't bat an eyelid yet will not allow a transgender woman on because they had work done for their transition to become their true selves. And at the moment, there's not even a comment about allowing transgender men, which, if it was a drag, queen, drag king, that would really suck. Or a drag queen, that would suck, because it don't, it's a drag queen race. <clears throat> there was major backlash from his comments. One from Pearl Tease, a San Francisco drag queen performer, who is also a trans woman, stating, RuPaul himself would not have the career he has and the platform he has if it wasn't for the trans women who came before us. <clears throat> RuPaul himself has since apologised for his comments. There was another queen who came out on the show as a transgender, Monique Beverly Hills. She wrote, <clears throat> she wrote an article about her journey she took through drag and trans her drag mother who was transgender helped her see the difference and how they could still do drag if you haven't read it you can find it online post nation it was done in 2018 however i'll read it now as it puts a good view on my trend transgenders should be able to do drag like anyone else should RuPaul already has accepted transgender women on his show, including me. By the time I was cast as a contest on season 5 of the show, I had, been, I had been presenting as a woman and performing as a drag queen for years, but often I felt terrible haunting for my body, no, hating for my body. And while I identified as a woman to myself, I mostly co copied it in secret, coped in secret, when I tried to speak to others about my feelings, I often was told that I was just an effeminate gay guy who made a pretty drag queen. On the show, I thought I could just squash my internal feelings of being a woman, but RuPaul and the judges could tell I wasn't being my true to myself. When they questioned me, I broke down and cried, sharing that I was actually a transgender woman. It was the most vulnerable, scary moments of my life. My path to that moment was a tor tortured one. Growing up in Humboldt Park neighbourhood <clears throat> of Chicago in the 1980s, I was soft and effeminate as a child, 
Men often preyed on and hurt me, but no one ever knew because little boys weren't supposed to talk about this kind of stuff that men did to them. When I was about 11 years old, my aunt adopted me and helped save my life. She encouraged me to enjoy to join our local community bachata dance troupe. I quickly became a confident, overdramatic dancer, and my troupe would battle other dance troops in our hood. Think Bring It On meets West Side Story, with a fierce salsa music track playing. It was years later, while I was dancing at Rancho Luna Nightclub, sorry, Rancho Luna Nightclub, that I met a season's queen, a sickening diva who was loving, but also didn't take crap from anyone. At first I was confused why a real woman was performing as a drag queen, but I soon learned that she was a transgender. I had never, never met anyone like her, and I was blown away by how unlockable or passable for women she was. She was <clears throat> one of the first people to t- talk to me about being transgender and explain how it's different from being a gay man. She helped me access street hormones, like many trans girls, who didn't have insurance or money. While medically unregulated, the hormones began providing some basic changes to my body, voice, hair and face that allowed me to present more feminine and be perceived by others as a woman. By looking more real, I was safer and received less homophobic harassment while navigating daily life. But it also made me more desirable as a drag queen at clubs. When we appear more feminine, customers consider us more beautiful. Bar staff take better care of us and managers book us more. Audience, audiences tip, tip us more frequently and with bigger bills. <clears throat> As a result, there's a lot of pressure on drag queens to turn to street hormones and pump parties where non-surgical grade silicone and other materials are injected to achieve feminine curves. While some male performers realise they identify as women and begin to transition, others continue to identify as cisgender gay men. This issue has divided friends in the drag world. Some gay men may feel betrayed or left behind by their close friends who started off as cisgender but later transitioned. Five years ago, a close drag friend of mine said he was considering getting breasts. This this friend identified as a cisgender gay man, but noted if someone was going to tip them while performing a Beyonce number, real breasts might earn tips in $20 bills instead of $1. When your living is largely based on tipping generosity of your patrons and their perception of how flawless your feminine, feminine illusion is, It makes sense that some cisgender gay men feel compelled to have evasive medical procedures that modify their bodies in ways typically done by trans women. Of course, this often comes with horrible side effects. I have known queens to receive silicone injections in their butts, hips and face that were mixed with fixer flat glue or cement that hardens and greys over time. I have seen drag performers come back from surgeries performed by a back alley doctors who gave them new breasts in shape of squares with no cleavage. I have had to help my <coughs> a close transgender girlfriend save her new silicon hip by pushing it back into place with a rolling pin after it collapsed down her leg. It's in this reality one where both cisgender men and trans women in the drag would feel pressure to surgically change their bodies, that RuPaul said he would limit his contestants to those who had begun transitioning. I am grateful for the opportunity that I was given when I was cast on RuPaul's Drag Race, but I don't agree that drag should only be for cisgender gay men. Trans women are not only (coughs) equatable competitors on RuPaul's Drag Race, but trans women of colour specifically have helped shape and elevate audiences, highest highest expectations for drag queens and nightlife performers. Trans women of colour have put their bodies on the line. They threw some of the first bricks at Stonewall to demand for our rights and snatched national titles in the drag pageantry scene. They have uniquely coveted spots in the sacred art of feminine queen performances in black and Latina LGBTQ ballroom culture. Trans women should be allowed to compete on RuPaul's Drag Race no matter where they are in their transition journey. 
just as RuPaul has allowed cisgender gay men to do for years. Trust me, for trans women, we are just trying to be our most authentic selves. So looking at the article, it does actually back up what I said about Trinity the Talk, who, as I said, has had surgery to make themselves look more feminine. And it kind of seems a bit mind-blowing that cisgender men, gay men, who are drag queens, are doing this, this themselves, especially back alley, because that's dangerous shit. I mean, if you, if you, well, just look at botched, and even when you have it done properly, it can still go wrong. And there were stories about, a few years ago, about boob jabs, where instead of having implants, you had it injected into your breast, and that went horribly wrong, majorly, because it wasn't put into place, and it shifted, and it caused a lot of problems. <clears throat> But it does highlight that transgender queens should be respected and allowed to compete in drag race and should be watched as drag queens because they are beautiful performers. I mean, there are there are many transgenders, non-binary people out there who are drag kings and queens. Even with RuPaul's drag, RuPaul's celebrity drag race proves anyone can do it as they've had straight, gay, cisgender men and women. So just Put on a transgender. It's not going to kill the show. It's not. Peppermint was amazing in her season. I was so rooting for her to win. She was loving. She was great. She had energy. And when she told everyone in the workroom that she was transgender, they all loved her for it. And they admired admired her more for it as well. But it goes down to the same thing I've always said. A transgender woman is a woman. And a transgender man... Is a man. <clears throat> I'm never going to change my stance on it. We are who we are. We come in different shapes and sizes. We may look a little different, but we are who I identify as. And if you want to know more about transgenders, non-binary, go to mermaidsuk.org.uk. Again, we are not sponsored by them. I just love mermaids and unicorns. I love unicorns. I spent yesterday... With a unicorn, with a unicorn headband on it, and my daughter wore the devil horns because and she said to me, I can't believe she said this, I deserve to wear the horns because I'm a devil. <coughs> I'm not going to comment on that. But that is for our show. <clears throat> Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all next week. And remember, hashtag let's get awkward and carry on the conversation about transgenders being drag queens and kings because they should. You've seen them perform on RuPaul's Drag Race. You can see them on YouTube. They deserve to be on. So I'll see you all next week. Bye.